Boris Johnson has suffered a humiliating rebellion over measures to slow the spread of the Omicron variant, with almost 100 Conservative MPs rejecting plans for COVID certificates, despite surging infections and personal lobbying by the Prime Minister. Joining us now is the Transport Secretary, uh, Grant Shapps. A very good morning to you. Morning. Uh, well, the Prime Minister has 99 problems, but authority ain't one of them, is it? <laughs> Oh, look, I think actually one of the interesting things that's happened this week is the Prime Minister went out on Sunday and asked people to get their jabs. And I'd been walking past queues of people round the block uh, responding to what the Prime Minister said and getting that jab in their arm, often through walking clinics, sometimes because they've booked. So I think actually, you know, the authority to, to ask people to do that and to become the most uh, jabbed and, and now booster jabbed country in the world is uh, is something that he's shown real leadership on. But he suffered the biggest to. revolt of his of his premiership. I mean, it's it's difficult to find comparisons with other uh, prime ministers. To have, uh, you know, it was suggested there could be seventy Tory MPs uh, that could go against Boris Johnson, but for that to rise to ninety nine. Uh, you, you must understand that as many are thinking this is the beginning of the end for Boris Johnson. Yeah, no, leadership. look, I don't, I, don't, I don't agree, but I do think that, you know, uh, all of us, MPs, you know, members of the government, no-one wants to go around curtailing people's freedoms. And it, you know, goes to the heart of, you know, uh, why we're elected, is to protect freedoms. On the other hand, we know about coronavirus, and we've found in the last nearly two years now that when you act early... Uh, it's usually better than waiting and seeing and then having to act later. So it's been, you know, these are difficult decisions and I understand MPs have found it difficult to decide. It should be said that it still went through the House with a huge majority because of 245. Labour. Because of Labour, not because of the Tory backbench. Well, if Labour, had, uh, just to be accurate, if Labour had sat on their hands and hadn't voted at all, say, it still would have gone through just on Conservative votes. But mm. nonetheless, I, you know, I accept that this is a difficult time for MPs. No one wants to be curtailing freedoms, I, me least of all. Um, nonetheless, I think it's really important that we don't allow our hospitals to become overrun. Some of your viewers uh, will, will recall last Christmas. I, I, I know that I, you know, I couldn't see my dad last year because he was in hospital. And at one point, when there were 40,000 people in hospital with coronavirus, I couldn't find out how he was because they were too busy to answer the phone because they were looking after so many people. We do not want to be back in that position uh, Although you were having parties, year. apparently. Well, I, 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 utterly wrong. Uh, I mean, I, I, you know, as I mentioned, I was sticking to the rules. I wasn't sure I'd ever see my dad again. Um, in fact, we thought we wouldn't uh, and, and didn't see him for, for four what you, months. What, what um, did you so think? I've what, got no sympathy with people who have parties. What did you think much. last night when we all saw this photograph? Conservative Party headquarters. You just repeat that. People have seen this. This is Conservative Party headquarters, a planned party. 20 to 30 people all huddled together. A very lovely buffet. This was orchestrated. This was planned. At Christmas last year, uh, this was uh, at last end of last year, when so many people were spending time on their own at home, not being able to see their family members dying in hospital on their own. What did you think, I, Mr. Schatz, when you saw this? I think this? it's utterly disgraceful. I've just told you about how I couldn't see my own dad for four months. I wasn't sure I'd see him again. To see that picture uh, makes me really, really angry. I should point out, just to correct your intro, not authorised by the Conservative Party, there were four secondees in that picture who've already been uh, disciplined and whatever the proper processes for uh, following this up will be followed by whomever. But, yeah, but what, what appears to have been authorised is that quiz because there's an email that's come out that suggested that people attending should go out through the back door of number 10 Downing Street. Well, I, I, sorry, I saw the picture of the quiz, which was a rather different picture from the wee weekend. I think we can separate the two. The Prime Minister sat in front of a, a virtual screen thanking staff for 10 or 15 it's minutes. It's where all the other staff were but, and but who we, knew well, that they I were mean, all together in the same room. You can see that picture on your, on, your, on your screen now. Uh, it, that, that doesn't look like a rave to, to, to me, and I think it's quite right the Prime Minister well, should thank it, it doesn't look like a work meeting either. Somebody's got a Christmas hat, the other one's got tinsel well, rounds, I, I, I and there's a report which... You're, avoid, you're avoiding the point. Look, people at home want, want some answers, Mr Shatt. So, come on, let's try and answer the simple questions. The, Ranveer put to you that the report now is that they were told to leave the back exit. Just explain to us, if this was just a work thing, why on earth would you send an email out days before and say, by the way, make sure everyone leaves the back exit? What's the, what is the reason for that? 
uh, look, people were working in number 10 throughout that period because they had to work in number 10 throughout that period to, to deal with the response. I had to go into But why would they leave the back exit? Through, Please just answer Christmas, that. But... Uh, just answer that one question. Why would they leave the yeah. back exit? No, I, I, look, I don't, I don't know the detail of uh, but but you can quite tell, often. We can see why it sounds a little bit... D just to explain, though, that it will be quite a routine uh, message to receive. If I'm in number 10, uh, there could be anything happening outside the, the, the front well, door. Well, i.e. reporters... You don't want to be seen, say, all of you leaving, say, we're, you know, having ha been popped down to Tesco Metro to get your drinks. I, I, was, I was actually going to say, quite often there's a, an event outside the front door, a dignitary arriving or something happening with the Christmas tree or something else going on. So it's quite routine to be asked to, to, be asked to uh, leave by uh, a different exit. So I don't know whether that is actually significant at all. I don't think, actually, looking at the photograph, and I don't think your viewers will think, of the Prime Minister there, sat in front of a screen thanking people for their work, uh, it really uh, okay. amounts to very much. Right. On the other hand, that photograph that you were showing... Uh, with the formal mayoral candidate is utterly okay. unacceptable. But, Mr Shatz, we have new restrictions now. These have been voted through in the Commons last night. And there may well be more restrictions to come. And, and, and there's, there's an onus on members of the public and venue owners and pubs and everybody to respect these rules. We heard from a guest earlier. She is not planning on listening to the rules. She's going to do what she wants. People on Twitter, Joan on Twitter says, me and my family will not be compromising our festivities. John on Twitter, they had Christmas parties when we were locked in houses. We will, we will too. I mean, there's a real feeling out there that people will just do whatever they want to do. Do you understand how serious this is, that people aren't going to listen to the government anymore? The authority has gone, don't you well, think? Look, we don't, we don't, we don't uh, achieve anything by doing things which harm our loved ones, potentially, uh, or ourselves, and so, which is why uh, I don't actually fully recognise the picture you're painting. For a start, we're not asking people to cancel uh, Christmas this year. We're in a vastly better position. Why? Because this government has invested in lateral flow tests. No other country in the world that I know of uh, provides them free of charge. No other major economy provides them free of charge. We've got more uh, vaccinations and now booster vaccinations already in over 40 per cent of people's arms than any other country. I don't know of any other country that has managed to roll out a booster programme uh, like this. Um, so these are the things which are going to protect people. We'll and it's one of the reasons why, almost uniquely actually, we've not had to um, ask people to curtail their Christmas activities. So there's, there's, no, there's okay. no reason for people well, to do that. Um, in, in Scotland, of course, it, it's now don't, the guidances don't mix with more than um, three households. Um, do you think household bubbles is something that you we'll have to look at in the next week or so. No, I don't. And that is guidance in Scotland rather than the law, law yes, it should certainly. be said. Um, and uh, the one thing that the Prime Minister said is if uh, we needed to or wanted to or thought there was a requirement to introduce anything further, we would recall Parliament to do that uh, before the end of the year. So we don't think that that is necessary and that would be a very high bar, uh, of course, to need to recall uh, Parliament um, over the Christmas period. So, no, we think we've got the right measures in place. We do ask people, and I do see people responding. By the way, this is why I don't really recognise the picture you were just painting. I I'm walking past huge queues of people around the block queuing up for their booster vaccination, directly responding to the Prime Minister's appeal on Sunday night to get ourselves boosted, uh, meaning that we've got the protection and going into uh, Christmas and the New Year. And, and that, that is the right way to go. And uh, as I say, we, we've rolled this out like no other nation on earth, as far as I can see. Just very quickly, on the Omicron variant, what is the latest in terms of the figures right now? Because there was lots of confusion yesterday. Dominic Raab gave us different broadcasters, three different figures. So as exactly how many people have yeah. now sadly lost their lives the, the, because of this? Where are we right now? The, late, the latest figures that we still have from yesterday, 10 people in hospital, one person who sadly passed away with Omicron. I think that's all to be expected because we know that uh, even though the doubling rate of Omicron is in incredibly quick, so we're seeing vastly more cases... Uh, we uh, expect that to take a while to convert into hospital cases. And, of course, the more of these measures that we take, the more boosters uh, and the more uh, of the measures that were passed in Parliament okay. last night uh, means that we hope to keep suppressing the numbers that go into hospital, okay. which is, of course, the entire point of this uh, plan. We saw 60,000 cases overall yesterday, um, which, is, which, which is high. Uh, but it's really important that the boosters keep people out of okay. serious illness and uh, out of hospital. Grant Shapps, Transport Secretary, thank you very much for joining us on the programme.